Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. Uh, so far in the SQL script section, we've seen how to create a standard SQL script stored procedure, and we've seen how to create a scalar UDF. Um, this exercise, we're going to look at how to create a table UDF. Um, now, we've kind of already seen this because earlier in our calculation view section, we used a table function as the data source uh, to replace what used to be done via a scripted uh, calculation view. Um, the table function is similar to the scalar UDF in that it's just a stored procedure, it uses SQL script like anything else, but it has a specialized interface. Um, the scalar UDF has a single scalar output, a, a single variable that can be output. A table UDF is basically the same concept except it has a single table output. Um, now, because of that structure, because it has a single table output, whereas a regular store procedure ha could have multiple, that means that we can do a select against it. It basically looks like a view or, or a table for all intents and purposes, but it allows us to build extra logic that we wouldn't be able to do in a, in a select alone, or use multiple data sources, more complex logic, like earlier in our calculation view example, uh, we had the complex uh, rank over uh, with the complicated grouping. And, you know, it, it can either be a way of doing logic that you couldn't do in a select alone or just encapsulating the complex parameters of a select, like multiple group buys and, and sorts or order buys and things like that, and encapsulate them into the function so that the calling application doesn't have to know all of those parameters or see them. Be all that different than what we've already seen with the stored procedure and the scalar function, but it's worth having a look at as well. Let's go ahead and add another function here. We're going to call this get PO counts. And uh, let's go ahead and grab the code for this. Get PO counts. SQL. And what do we have here? Um, you know, rather than put this in here a snippet at a time, let's put the whole code block in and then we'll talk about it so let's get PO counts notice it looks like a stored procedure it actually has the function header instead of stored procedure but we can have an input parameter in this case date and then we return a table and one and only one table that's what makes it possible to have a select statement against this object we define the structure of our table in line and here we basically have our select count uh, from our two tables. And inside here, we even call our scalar uh, UDF, the get full name. As you're seeing, what we're doing is we're basically taking the logic of our stored procedure that we originally created, and we're putting it in a function. Because it returned only one table, there's no reason it couldn't be a function. And then we don't have to use the call statement to go against it. We can just do a select statement against it. Uh, it makes it easier to consume. So we'll go ahead and save that, and let's build. And as I said, some of these uh, SQL script units are going to go a bit faster than the previous units. Uh, nobody wants to watch me type in all this code, and, and some of these concepts build on top of each other pretty straightforward. There we see it's successful. Now the biggest difference here. Uh, instead of calling it as a procedure, it's obviously up here in the functions, get PO counts. We can just generate a select statement against it, select star from PO counts, and we can pass in the date in here. So let's uh, 18, oh, sorry, uh, December 18th, 2014. And we can even use other SQL syntax here, like uh, we can put a limit on it, limit three. And we go ahead and execute it. And there's our data. We see our full name. 
still being processed. We see the accounts coming back. It's just an easier thing to do because now we don't need a specialized interface, the, the call statement. I can do a select against it. I can add other standard SQL elements inside here. Um, and obviously, a little bit later, you'll see from a programmatic standpoint of the application server, calling a stored procedure is a very different API than executing a select statement. And, and this just takes our custom logic and makes it easier to consume than a standard stored procedure would be.